Today we will create a full stack application that provides user authentication functionality using JSON Web Tokens or JWT with Django Rust framework on the back end and React on the front end. We will learn how to create RESTful APIs to handle user registration, login, logout, user information retrieval, and token refreshing. And then we will learn how to consume our API endpoints by making HTTP requests using Axios in our front end application. This is going to be so much fun and informative and really, really packed. So grab a cup of coffee and and let's get started. All right, so let's create a project directory where our project will live. Let's call it Django React Fun. And let's open it in Visual Studio Code. All right, and now we're going to create two directories, one for the back end, we'll call it back end, and another for our front end, and we will call it front end. All right, and now let's fire up terminal and we are going to start working on the back end. So let's cd the back end. All right, so now that we are in the back end directory, we want to create a Python environment. I'm going to create a Venv environment, but you are welcome to create any environment you like. Okay, so py-m venv and I'll call my environment venv and hit enter and wait a second. All right, looks like it was created for me. Okay, now let's activate it. Venv scripts activate, so scripts activate. All right, so now that we have our Venv ready, let's install Django. So pip install Django with a capital D and we hit enter. And now we gotta wait a bit. Right, as we wait, I would like to ask you to subscribe if you're enjoying this content and you could hit the like button as well. That would be very cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and now let's start a Django project. So Django-admin start project and let's call the project back end. And we could actually create it in this directory. To do this, we can add a period and hit enter. Right, and now we gotta wait some more. Okay, uh, now we have our project created for us. Let's try it out. So pi manage.py run server. Okay, let's follow link. Ta da! It worked successfully. Congratulations to us. All right, so now let's create our application. We're gonna use manage.py. So pi manage.py start app. And let's call our app accounts. Now let's hit enter and here's our app. Now let's go to settings.py and add it to our installed apps. I'll just write accounts. And now would be a good time to go to models.py and start defining some models. We want to start by defining our user model. It's going to be customized. So let's call it custom user. And it's going to inherit from Django's abstract user. So I'm going to copy the import statement from the docs and paste it. Right, and then we wanna pass in abstract user here. The abstract user comes with all the functionalities in field of the default user class. And according to the docs, it is highly recommended to set up custom user model, even if the default user model is sufficient for you, because it behaves identically to the default user, but you'll be able to customize your user model in the future if the need arises. However, in our case, we wanna customize our user class. We want to allow users to sign in with their email. To do this, we could use username field attribute and set it to email. All right, now since we'll be using email to sign in, it's important that we set the email field to unique. 
so no two users have the same email address so uh, models.email field and we want to set unique to true All right another thing we want to do is we want to add another required field when users are creating an account and this should be the user name field we want users to write their username and email when they create an account all right now let's define string method and we want to return self dot email all right next up we want to go to our settings.py and we want to tell django about our custom user model so in order to do this we want to add this line oath user model and we want to set it to our user model so in this case it is accounts because that's the name of our app right and then our model is called custom user so accounts dot custom user all right now let's make migrations so pi manage dot pi migrations right and now let's run migrations so pi manage dot pi migrate right let's hit enter all right so in order to be able to use our custom user model we should create a user creation form so let's create a new file and call it forms.py and that's where we're going to have our forms so we're going to define a custom creation form so i'm just going to copy this line so i can import it and we're gonna need to also import our custom user from models so um, models import custom user right and now let's define our user creation form actually let's call it custom user creation form all right and now let's add class meta like so and our model is the custom user model and fields email all right now another form that we could define that would be handy is the user change form which is used in the admin interface to change a user's information and permissions so it will help us update our user's information through the admin so let's define it let's call it custom user change form and we want to import user change form and pass it in all right and now we want to define class meta and pass in our model which we'll set to custom user and also specify the fields and we want to set it to email oh i forgot to add a comma here and also i should add a comma here because fields should be a tuple okay that should do it now since we know that we want to be using django's admin site uh, let's create a super user to be able to log into the admin so pi manage dot pi create super user and hit enter uh, let's give our super user an email i'm gonna just input a fake email and a username and a password all right okay now let's run server so pi manage dot pi on server all right and now <laughs> let's try to see if we can log into our admin site let's type in the email and the password okay and our admin site is pretty much empty so let's change that uh, so let's go to our admin.py Right, and what we want to do now is register our custom user model. So let's import it from models import custom user. Okay, and we also want to register our forms, right? So uh, from forms import 
custom user change form and custom user creation form and now let's create class custom admin user and we will want to extend Django's user admin so I'm just going to copy the import statement from the docs and paste it and then pass it in and next we want to add our user creation form so we'll use add form to do this and we'll set it to our custom user creation form and for the form we've made for changing users info we will use form and set it to custom user change form and then we want to set our model to custom user and then to register our class we can use a decorator and we'll use admin dot register custom user all right now let's go back to our admin site and refresh and we have accounts and users within it okay let's click on it and this is the super user account i created earlier let's click on it and we can change the username first name last name email uh, status and permissions and over here we have last login and they joined so pretty cool right all right so now let's go to settings.py again and let's talk authentication <laughs> by default Django offers us pretty awesome session based authentication but today we would like to use JWT authentication so let's install Django rest framework Okay, so pip install Django REST framework. All right, let's hit enter. Okay, and now we are gonna need to go back up to installed apps and add REST framework. Just copied it from the docs and now I'll just paste it. All right, and to quickly, easily and securely implement JSON Web Token Authentication, we're going to make use of Django REST Framework's simple JWT. All right, so let's install it as usual. I'll just copy the command from the docs and paste it, hit enter. All right, and then we wanna tell REST Framework about the authentication we want to use. All right, so in our settings.py, let's add rest underscore framework and we want our default authentication class to be rest framework simple JWT. All right, I think this should do it. All right, now back to the docs and let's go to settings and we want to copy this part, which is our simple JWT configuration, which would allow us to customize aspects and settings of our JWT. Of course, we also need to import uh, date and time. So just copy the import statement and paste it, All right? And now let's go back and look at our, our simple JWT configuration. Okay, so our signing key is set to Django secret key, which of course in production should be kept a secret. All right, and in order to increase security, we wanna set rotate refresh token to true. This will make it that every time a token is refreshed, a new one is created. And we also want to set blacklist after rotation to true as well and this would make it so that the token that was there before rotation is blacklisted and since we set blacklist after rotation to true we are gonna need to add this to the installed apps which is uh the simple jwt token blacklist all right, and now let's apply migrations. So 
pi dot pi. Great. All right, now we need to create a new file and we'll call it serializers.py. That's where we're going to be creating our serializers based on our custom user model. So let's go ahead and import it. So from models import custom user and from Django Rust, we will be using the model serializer class which will automatically generate a set of fields for us based on our model. All right, so let's go ahead and import serializers from Django Rust. All right, and let's start defining our custom user serializer that will inherit from serializers.model serializer. All right, and now let's add class meta and specify our model custom user. And now let's add in the fields that we want to have ID, username, and email. All right, now let's define user registration serializer that is going to be responsible for serializing registration requests and creating new users in our application. It will also inherit from DRF's model serializer. All right, so let's define class meta. And just like we've done over here, let's add in our model and the fields we want. All right, so let's also add ID, username, email, and for registration, each user would want to make a password. So let's add in password. But I would also like to add extra security by having password verification. So let's add password one and password two. Okay, and now we're gonna need to define password one and password two. So password one, it's going to be a character field. So let's set it to serializers dot char field. And we want to set write only to true. This would make it so that password one is for input only and it will not be included in the serialized output. Let's also do the exact same thing for password two. So I just copied and pasted. And to make sure that our password field is write only, let's add extra quarks. It takes a dictionary. So I'll just make a password and set it to write only true. All right, and now let's create the method validate to validate our password. We want to make sure that password one and password two are the same before creating the user. All right, so let's add an if statement. I want to say if password one is not equal to password two, then we want to raise a validation error. Maybe have it say passwords to not match. All right, and we want to return our attributes. Okay, now another way to make our passwords more secure is to add some rules. For example, we could make it so that users cannot have passwords that are shorter than eight digits. All right, so let's get a hold of our password. Dot get password one. All right, and then let's add another if statement. If length password is less than eight, 
want to raise an error. So raise serializers dot validation error passwords must be at least eight characters. All right, and now finally, let's define the create method. So self and validated data. All right, and now let's get a hold of our password. B validated data dot pop password one. Next, we want to just discard password two. So validated data dot pop password two. All right, now let's write our return statement. We're going to create our user. So custom user dot object dot create user. I want to set password to password. And then we want to just pass in the rest of the validated data. All right, so we have defined our custom user serializer and our user registration serializer. Oh, <laughs> this should be a Boolean, not a string, I think. Sorry about that. Please, if you've been following along, please make sure to correct it and remove the quotation marks if you've put any. All right, and oh, I've actually meant to call this file serializers, not serializer. So I'm gonna rename it before proceeding. All right, next up, we are gonna define our login serializer. So class user login serializer. And it's gonna inherit from serializers dot serializer. And our users will input an email. So let's add an email field. So serializers dot chore field, and then they will input their password. So let's also add a password field, which is also going to be a character field, but let's set right only to true. All right, now let's define uh, the validate method. And in order to authenticate our users, we are going to need to import authenticate from Django.contrib. Dot oath. All right. And we want to authenticate our user. So user authenticate and we'll pass in our user's data. Oh, I misspelled data here. <laughs> okay, excellent. Now let's add an if statement. So I want to check if user and user is active, then we'll be returning user. Else we want to raise an error. So serializers dot validation error, and we could say incorrect credentials or something. All right, awesome, possum. <laughs> I think those serializers should work. So now it's time to go to views.py and create our views here. Right, so the first view we'll be creating is the registration view. All right, so how about we call it user registration API view, right? And it's going to inherit from DRF's generic API view. So let's import it. So from rest framework dot generics import generic API view, right? Let's pass it in. So since this is a view for users to register, then we want anyone to be able to access it. So let's set permission classes to 
allow any and to use allow any we are gonna need to import it so from rest underscore framework dot permissions import allow any all right and now we wanna point to our serializer class so let's import our serializers so from serializers import all of them okay so our serializer class for res registration was called user registration serializer all right now let's define our post method so it would be post self request and let's also add args quarks all right now let's get our serializer so self dot get serializer and data would be request dot data okay next we want to make sure that the data is valid so serializer is valid and if it's not we want to raise exceptions so let's set raise exception to true all right and then let's set user to serializer dot save and token to refresh token for user and we're gonna need to import refresh token from simple jwt so from rest framework simple jwt dot tokens import refresh token all right and now let's set data to serializer dot data and then data tokens refresh string token and our access token would be string token dot access token and finally we want to return response which we're gonna need to import so let's import it from rest framework dot response okay and within our response we want to pass in the data and status status oh we also need to import status also uh, from rest framework import status okay so status dot let's say 201 created all right now let's define our login api views it's also going to inherit from generic api view and just like with our user registration api view you want to set permission classes to allow any right and we want to set our serializer class as well we call the user login serializer all right and now let's define our post method take self request and args quarks all right now let's get a hold of our serializer uh, we self dot get serializer and data also be class dot data excellent 
All right, and now we want to check if our serializer data is valid. So it's valid. And if it's not, we want to raise an exception. So I'll set raise exception to true. All right, and now let's set user to serializer dot validated data. And then we want to create an instance of our custom user serializer using the validated data. So custom user serializer and we'll pass in our user. Okay, and now let's set our token. We wanna refresh token for our user. Okay, and then let's set data to serializer data and our tokens to refresh to the new token we've created and the access token to token dot access token. All right. And finally, let's write our return statement we'll return response, I'll pass in our data and send a status uh, with code 200. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's quickly define the logout view so our users can log out. So call it user logout API view. And also inherit from generic API view. And our permission classes would be is authenticated because only logged in users should be able to log out. So is authentic. Oh, I need to import it as well. All right. So is authenticated. Okay, and now let's define our post method. So post post self request and quarks quarks. Okay, now we wanna try uh, to get access of our refresh token. So request.data refresh. Okay, and then we want to set our token to refresh token, refresh token. Okay, and then we want to blacklist that token. So the token dot blacklist. And finally, we want to return response and we want to pass in status. 205, which is reset content. And let's add our accept block. So accept exception as E. And we want to return response status. Let's add our status to 400. Bad request. Awesome. So now that we have our views, let's set our URLs. So first let's go to our backend directory, our project directory. We want to go to urls.py and we want to import include so that we can include our accounts app URLs. And we want to add to the URLs patterns. Um, right. So let's add API and we want to include our accounts dot URLs. All right. Okay. Now let's go to our accounts directory again, and we want to create a URLs dot py file, and we want to import path. So from Django dot URLs import path. And we want 
to import our views so from views import all of them okay and now let's create our url patterns list and have our path first one we want is the register a register endpoint okay and our view is user registration api view and we want to have it be as view right and let's give it the name register user okay next a uh, login login and then dash and our view was user login app api view once again we want to add it as view and let's give it the name login user all right and then we want path logout right and logout api view and just like we've done earlier I want it as view and let's give it the name logout user right and finally we want to create an endpoint for our token so let's create path token slash refresh All right and we want to import token refresh view from rest framework simple jwt dot views import token refresh view and then we'll add it here also have it be as view and give it the name token refresh all right now let's run server and check our endpoints All right, looks like in addition to our admin endpoint, we have the API endpoint. So let's follow it. Yes, and we have the register, login, logout, and token. All right, let's try register. Oh, there it is. It looks good. So we could actually use it right now to create a user if we want. However, uh, we're going to be creating a user anyways after we create a React app. So let's try it then. Okay, now let's check on our other endpoints. Let's check on our login endpoint. Okay, here it is. Okay, let's check our logout. Right, there it is. Awesome, and now token refresh. All right, now since we want to be able to log in and log out users from our front end, which we have not yet created, we're gonna need to install Django course headers which will allow us to make requests to our Django app from a different origins. So I'll just go to PyPy and copy uh, the install command and I'm gonna paste it and hit enter. All right, and now we've installed Django course. Okay, cool. All right, and now we will need to add course headers to our installed app in um, settings.py. So let's do that. All right. And we're also going to need to add uh, course headers middleware to our middleware as well as Django middleware, common, common middleware. So I'm, I'm just copying this from the docs on PyPy. And I'm gonna paste it here. All right, and then I'm going to configure the middleware's behavior in the Django settings, just like the docs say. And I'm going to be setting a course allow all origins to true. Although this is highly not recommended for production because it's a security hazard. So be careful with that. So for now, we'll just set it to true. Okay. All right, so now we could start creating our front-end application. So I'm going to open a new terminal and I'll cd into front-end. 
and I would like to create um, my React app with Vite. So I'm going to type in the command npm create Vite at latest. And since I want my project to be created in this directory, in the front end directory that we're in right now, I'm going to add in a period and I'll hit enter. All right, and we want to create a React app. So I'm selecting React and we want to use JavaScript. Right, so I'm gonna follow these commands. So I'll type in npm i because typing i is faster than install. I hit enter. All right, and now we want to run dev. So npm run dev. All right, let's follow the link. Here's our Vite React app. Woohoo! All right. All right, super cool. Now let's go to our source directory and let's create a new folder and call it pages. And we want to create a login page. So call this file login.jsx. Uh, a register page, so I'll call it register.jsx and a home page, so I'll call this file home.jsx and, and also let's create layout.jsx. All right. Um, and now let's go to our homepage and create a functional component. And let's do the same for all the others. By the way, I'm able to use RFC and hit enter and create uh, the React component super quickly because of a plugin I have. Uh, I will leave the name of the plugin in the video description in case you are interested. All right, so since we're gonna want to be able to navigate between our pages. Let's quickly install React Router DOM. So I'll just copy the command terminate server and then paste it, hit enter. All right, so now we have React Router DOM, which is great. All right, so now let's go to our app.jsx and let's clean it up. I'm going to remove all the import statements except for the app.css, uh, CSS. <laughs> and I'll move this and everything within the return statement. All right, and then I would like to import browser router from React Router. So I'll just copy the import statement and paste it. And I'll also be importing routes and route because we'll be also using them. So routes, route. All right. And now let's start using browser router like so. And within it, we'll have our routes. All right. And Let's import the page components that we've created. So I'll do it quickly. Import layout, import register, and import login. All right, now let's add route path slash and the element we want to pass into this is our layout element. Okay, and then we want to add route again. This one will be the index and the element is gonna be our home element. All right, and next we want to add another route and this route would be the route with path log in and our element would be our login element. And then we want to add another route 
with the path register and the element will be our register element. All right, and now if we run dev, uh, so npm run dev, we will see our progress. Oh, okay, so we see uh, our layout page. So let's go to it. All right, now we want to import outlet and link from React Router DOM. And we'll be creating some sort of super simple nav system. So let's add a nav element. Let's add here an unordered list and have our first element be a link that links to home. Right, and then I'm just going to copy this part and paste it again two more times. And the second part we want to link to log in. So we'll have it say login. And here we want to link to register. So we'll have it say register. Maybe make it capital R. All right, now let's see what happens when we click on login. Okay, so we are redirected to login, but we, d we don't see our login page. Actually, all we see is our layout element. Okay, and that's where we want to use our outlet. So we're here, let's add outlet. Cool. All right. So if we click on home, we see home. If we click on login, we see login. If we click on the register, we see register. Nice. All right. Awesome. So now that we have set up our routing, how about we start making our register page work as well as our login page. All right. Now let's go to our register.jsx and let's start adding some registration logic. So of course we would like to be able to get inputted username, email, password, and password too. So let's begin by creating form data and set form data. And we'll be using React's use state. So Let's import it. All right. And we'll keep our form data in an object. So first we'll have username and then email, password one, and then password two. All right. So like we said, we will be creating a form. So let's create a form element. And our form is going to have fields for our username, email, password one and password two, which we can call confirm password. All right, and now let's give our fields the appropriate types, names, and so on. So our input field for the username should be type text, and we should give it the name, username, and its value should be set to form data dot username. All right, email type would be email, name, email, and the value form data dot email, password, the 
type should be password name password one value foreign data dot password one confirm password we'll also get the type password name password to the value foreign data dot password to. Okay, awesome. And now to make sure that our foreign data gets updated when our user inputs anything, then we should create an event handling function. We can call it const handle change that we would want to trigger on change. So for every input field, we're going to add on change and we'll pass in our function handle change. So I'm just going to add it to every input field. All right, so now if we try to type into our input fields, we won't be able to input anything because we have set the value to our form data value and the values are set to an empty string. So we literally can't input anything right now. All right, so let's add logic to our handle change and that would allow us to input and also would make it so that our form data object is updated as we input or as our user inputs in our input fields. Okay, so we want to set form data, right? So form data, and we will be dynamically updating our form data. So we want to get a hold of our field's name and the value, like so, right? And that's it. Okay, now when we try to type, we should be able to type, yes. <laughs> awesome, all right. Now, if we wanna see if our form data gets updated, we can add console log form data. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to try to type something. I'll type pico. All right. Type pico at email. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, as I'm typing, the form data is getting updated. Right? Cool. So you probably have noticed that our form is missing a submit button. So let's add it. All right, so let's add a button element and we'll give it the type submit and we'll have it say register. All right, we could also add another break here. Okay, that looks better. All right, so of course the purpose of this button is to submit our user's registration form. So, so we'll be making an event handler called handle submit to handle submitting our form. And it's gonna be an async function. And we're going to get to it in a second. Um, but before we do that, I want to also add disabled here and set it to is loading because we don't want our users to be able to spam the submit button and just keep sending requests. We want to make sure that our button is disabled when the form submission is still taking place. So let's create const is loading and set 
is loading and set it to use state false. So, Alright, so I guess the time has come to write in the logic for our handle submit and attempt to make a post request to our backend with our user registration data. Uh, so to do this, to make HTTP requests, there are so many options and one of them is the fetch API. Uh, but for this project, I feel like Axios would be advantageous because of how it handles JSON and a bunch of other things. So I will be using Axios to make requests to my backend. And in order to use it, I'm going to need to download it. So let's fire up terminal again and I'm going to terminate batch job disconnect server. Oh, come on. Yes. Right. And to install Axios. I'll type in the command npm install axios and hit enter. Right, and now I have axios, so I can go ahead and import it. So import axios from axios. All right. All right, now. Let's go back to our handle submit method and we want to prevent default and then check if is loading because we want to prevent form submission if is loading is already true. Right, so we'll add in return like so and then we want if it's not true then we want to set is loading to true to indicate that form submission is in progress and we don't want to allow users to keep sending more forms or trying to submit more forms okay and then we want to try to send a post request to our register endpoint so that's Create const response. We wanna await axios post. Then we want to make a request to our register endpoint. So I'll just copy the URL that leads to our register endpoint in our back end and I'll and I'll just paste it here and then pass in the form data. All right, and if all goes as planned, then we would like to know that. So let's add console log. Let's write success. And then pass in response data. Okay, and now let's add uh, the catch block, right? And we wanna catch if there's an error and we wanna know what this error is, if it exists. So console log and say error during registration, error response data. All right, and now in order for handle submit to work, Let's add on click event listener to our button and pass in handle submit. All right, so now our form should work and we should be able to register users with it. So let's run server again. So npm run dev. Okay, and let's try to create a new user. Let's make the username test email test at test.com password test one two three four and test one two three four right let's hit enter and now let's go to our admin page and oh here's our test user it was created for us that is super cool. Awesome.
right? And if we inspect and check our console, we see the success message. Yay. Oh, actually, let's uh, delete uh, the console log form data over here. All right. Um, all right. So another thing that would be cool if it, we could tell our users if they succeeded in creating an account or not. And it would also be nice to show them if there are errors. So let's create const success message and set success message. And let's initiate it to use state null. And let's also create const error and set error and also initiate it to use state null. Now let's go back to the try block in our handle submit function and let's add set success message to registration successful All right and now if there is an error then we also want to tell our users so let's add an if statement if error response and error response dot data then object dot keys error dot response dot data for each field const error message we want to set it to error dot response data field then if error messages actually let's call this error messages instead of error message and and error messages dot length is greater than zero then we want to set error to error messages zero all right and now um let's scroll down and let's add our error and success messages to our ui all right so if there is an error then we want to show a paragraph element that shows that error okay let's see if it would work so i'm going to try and create another user named Pico. We already know that we have a user named Pico already and there shouldn't be two users with the same name. And let's make it have the email test to email.com and let's give it also an invalid password. We've decided that passwords has to be at least eight characters in length. Okay, let's try to hit register. Okay. And we see the error, a user with that username already exists. I think it would be cooler if we make our error red. So let's add style and make the color red. Okay, I think now if we have an error, it would be red. Let's try to create another user and give it the username test2 and the email test2 at email.com. And let's give it an invalid password. That's only four characters. And then let's hit enter. Oh, here is our error and it is red, just like we wanted. Oh, I've just noticed that our register button is still disabled and that's because I forget to enable it again. So after our catch block, we could add a finally block and we could set is loading to false again, right? 
and now I think that the register button is gonna stop being disabled. We're gonna test it, but let's now add our success message. So if we, had a, if we have a success message, then we also want a paragraph element with the success message to show. And we want to have our success text have the color green. Okay, so let's try. <laughs> uh, let's see if we could create a user with the username test2 and the email test2 at email.com and the password test1234 test one, two, three, four. Okay, let's hit register. Yay, here is our success message. Cool. All right, now let's check if we've created this user. So I'm gonna refresh. Yay, here it is, we did it. <laughs> All right, this is very cool. Now I think we can create the logic for our logging in as well, cause right now our login page is empty. All right, so our login.jsx is gonna have so much in common with our register.jsx. So I'm just going to open our register to the right and copy some stuff from it to save time. First thing I'm copying is the Axios import statement because we're also gonna be using Axios here. And just like we've done over here in register.jsx, we'll also be using React's use state to set our form data. So I'll also be creating const form data and set form data. Be setting it to use state as well. However, when users are logging in, they will be logging in with their email and their password. All right, and now let's quickly create our form just like we've done in the register.jsx. I'm just going to copy the whole thing and then I will edit it. So we'll also have a success message that we'd like to show, but instead of having this say register, you could have it say login. And we will not need a username field, so I'll delete this. And I'll delete everything below it other than the password field. And the submit button, of course. But instead of register, let's have it say login. And instead of having this be called password one, let's just have it say password and uh, its value would be form data dot password. Okay. And our login form doesn't show because we have variables that we have not yet added. Uh, so let's let's do let's add them. Okay, so for storters, let's add the handle change function because in our login, it will be exactly the same. This logic would work just fine. We want to also add is loading and this part where, where we have the success message and the uh, error message. We're also going to need a handle submit function. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing. Just paste it like so. But instead of having it make a post request to register, we want it to make a post request to our login endpoint. And instead of it saying registration successful, we want it to say 
login successful and instead of error during registration error during login all right now here's our login page okay you know what i'm gonna add another <laughs> break right here all right so it definitely looks better uh, however we are not done because um when our user logs in we need to persist the login and we need to save the access token and the refresh token so let's go back to our try block and let's add local storage dot set item and we want to set our access token to response dot data dot tokens dot access and we also want to set local storage dot set item refresh token and then response dot data dot tokens dot refresh all right now we can try to actually log in we've created user with the username test and we've created a user with the username test too so let's try logging in with test the, the email for test was test at test.com all right so test at test.com the password was test one two three four right we logged in login successful <laughs> cool all right now let's try to log in with incorrect credentials okay it says incorrect credentials nice we did it all right very cool now i think it would be very nice if on our home page we would have a message for our logged in users that says hi and then their username and thanks for logging in if they are logged in and if they're not logged in then I would like to show them the message please log in right so let's import new state from react and initialize const username and set username to you state and an empty string oh over here i wrote username instead of username all right and we're also going to want to keep track of whether the user is logged in or not so I'll set logged in and we're going to initialize it to you state false okay and then we want to conditionally render this based on whether the user is logged in or not. So is logged in then. And we would want to render hi username, thanks for logging in. And otherwise we want to show please log in. All right, and to actually check if our user is logged in or not, we are gonna need to make a get request to our back end so let's import axios and we're also going to import use effect from react all right and now let's use our use effect hook and we'll leave the dependency array empty because we will want it to run once when our component mounts and now let's define a function within our use effect hook to check if a user is logged in let's call it check logged in user 
and it's going to be an async function. And we'll have a try catch blocks within it. In our try block, we want to try and retrieve token from local storage. So that's great. Const token and local storage dot get item access token. All right. Now, if our token exists, then we will want to make a get request to our backend to see if the token is valid and the user is authenticated. And also to see if we could obtain information about the user, like the user's username, for example. Now there is only one problem. We have not created such an endpoint, but it's actually very easy to do. So let's just do it now. Uh, so uh, let's go to our views.py and we want to import retrieve API view because we will be using it to define our user API view to inherit from retrieve API view. Actually, let's call it user info API view. Okay. And let's set permission classes to is authenticated. That way, if we make a get request to it and we're not authenticated, it will return a forbidden error. And let's set serializer class to custom user serializer. Right. And to make sure that our view only returns information related to the authenticated user, uh, let's override the get object method and return self dot request dot user. All right. And now in order to be able to access it, let's go to urls.py and let's add a path that links to it. Path users, or actually user, and then our API view is user info API view. We want it as view. Let's make the name user info. All right, and now let's go to our API endpoints and see if it were added. Yes, it is. It's here. Okay, let's go to API slash user. There it is. Our user info API it accepts get requests. Cool. Nice. All right, so let's go back to our home.jsx and continue. All right, so we said that if token, then we would want to make a get request. So let's create const config where we're going to keep our headers so we can authenticate our get request or send in our token. So we'll have authorization error. token. Okay. And now let's try to make our get request. So const response, we'll set it to await axios dot get and our endpoint is API slash users. I'll just copy it and paste it. Okay, and we want to pass in config. Okay, now if the request is successful, then we want to set is logged in to true. And we want to set username to response data 
dot username else we want to set logged in to false and we want to set username to an empty string and in the catch block we want to add error and also set logged in to false and username to an empty string right and finally we want to call our function so check logged in user okay so now let's see if it works okay so it still says please log in so let's go to login and let's try to log in with test at test.com and the password test one two three four Okay, it says login successful. So let's go to home. Oh, yay. It says, hi, test. Thanks for logging in. This is super cool. All right. Now, um, you guys remember we created an endpoint for logging out. So let's define a function and call it handle logout. And our handle logout function is going to be an async function because we'll also be making a post request. It's gonna also have a try patch block. And then the try block, we're gonna also try to get a hold of our tokens. But here, we'll try to get our refresh token. So const refresh token, local storage, get item and we want to get the refresh token all right if we find the refresh token and we want to make a post request so await axios.post and we'll be making a post to our logout endpoint so it was api slash logout right let's double check yep okay let's just copy it and paste it and we want to send our refresh token so refresh and refresh token then we want to remove our tokens from our local storage. So local storage dot remove item access token and then local storage dot remove item refresh token. And then we want to set logged in to false and set username to an empty string All right and if there is an error then we want to console log failed to log out all right and now let's add a button and have it say log out Oh, I need to add a div or a react fragment. Let's just add a fragment. Okay, and on click, we want to handle logout. All right, so now let's test it, of course. Okay, but before we test it, I want to show you something kind of cool in the admin that I haven't shown you earlier, I think, although it's been here for a while. You see over here, we have token blacklist. And if we check the blacklist tokens, it is currently empty. All right, so let's have it to the side right here. And let's log in as test, test.com and input our password. Right, and we have logged in. Okay, now let's go 
to our home page and it says we're logged in it got our in our username from the back end which is super great okay now let's click on log out and look our token appeared here in blacklisted tokens so our fresh token was blacklisted and this is how we know that our logout functionality works we did it <laughs> I would like to encourage you to play around with the admin, check out the outstanding token section, see what happens when you log in and play around, you know, make the code really your own. By the way, I'm going to create a GitHub repo with the code and I'm gonna leave the link in the description in case you wanna go through it and, you know, to help you follow along and stuff. If you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, please type that down in the comments. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe. Have a lovely day and see you next time. Bye.